Εδώ λοιπόν φίλε και φίλοι, κυρίε και κύριοι, στο TV World Man και το Metal Hammer, και είναι πολύ μεγάλη τιμή σήμερα να φιλοξενούμε στην εκπομπή τον κύριο Wolf Hoffman. Τον... TV War, huh? TV War, yeah. I like it. Well, uh, you know, Wolf, they think uh, I like in uh, this reincarnation of Accept is that you didn't reform as a nostalgia band. Right. You didn't do it just to make an average album and then go out and cash in playing the old songs. You make three albums in five years, three albums which are equal on quality with the classic Accept albums, and uh, you support those Thank songs, playing the songs every night. Half of the set list, more than half of the set list, is based on the last three albums. It's crazy, which isn't is it? Yeah. Very, very important, I think. And you believe and you support this uh, thing. Yeah. That yeah. wouldn't work differently, would it? No, well, I mean, uh, that was our goal initially mm -hmm. when we regrouped. We said, you know, you know what, guys, if we're going to do this, especially if we have a new singer, let's go out and, 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 and make new albums that are relevant. Let's mm -hmm. not just go play the old songs like a lot of our colleagues are. We really, our goal was to have current material because we felt like we could still do it, mm -hmm. you know. We, we did it back then and, and, and Peter and I are still in the band and we were sort of the songwriting partners back then and why wouldn't we, why shouldn't we be able to do it today? Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, it, it, it worked. Yeah, you know there are lots of um, young fans, people who weren't even born when you released your uh, Crazy, albums. I know, I know. Yes, and uh, they ignore your past, they know the last three albums and uh, I DJ occasionally. They come and ask for songs from the latest albums and they relate to those songs. And I'm wondering, what makes those songs and those albums so relevant to the younger generation? Man, that's something I have no idea about. We just sit down and write songs, the be mm -hmm. how we feel at the time, and we don't think about it too much, and we don't really have a goal. We, 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 we never sit down and write a song for a 20-year-old. or a We mm -hmm. just write the songs that come out of our heart and our stomach and our guts. Mm -hmm. And if fans like him, that's, that's awesome. Uh, this one is the last album you released, Blind Rage, which uh, was released uh, some months ago, and that was number one in Germany, right? Yeah. Can you imagine after, <laughs> after having been doing this uh, almost 40 years, yeah. you get a number one in Germany? Crazy, huh? Crazy. I think it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I'd like you to uh, comment on a couple of tracks that I really love from this one. And uh, the first one is Dying Breed. Yeah. Uh, do you really think that uh, you and Judas Priest and Saxon uh, are the last of a dying breed? Is this breed dying? You know, <laughs> when we wrote that song, it was funny. Peter and I were sitting there and said, we really like this term dying breed. Mm -hmm. But then we thought, let's not write the song from our perspective as if we are the dying breed. Because let's write it about the, the first generation of the, you know, the, the people that we admired. When we grew up as teenagers, there was Judas Priest and ACDC and the Scorpions mm -hmm. and Uriah Heep and whatnot, you know, the first wave of bands, and those are unfortunately now, slowly but surely, they seem to be, you know, mm -hmm. be the dying breed. So it is true, it's, you know, we, so we, it's a tribute to our heroes, mm -hmm. basically. So do you think that, uh, will you have the chance to enjoy a new generation of so special and important bands? Yeah, I don't I see it coming. Hard to say. I mean, it's, it, it really seems to be the case that the same bands that headline these festivals yeah. 20 years ago are still doing it nowadays. And who knows what's going to happen when all, this, all these first generation yeah. bands are gone. I mean, you have to take newer mm -hmm. bands eventually. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's still, we're playing in, in uh, next week, we're playing with uh, Kiss and Judas Priest. And those bands were around 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and. Um Another thing that I still like and accept is that you still have this uh, uh, social consciousness on your lyrics. I mean, Wanna Be Free is a, a sample of um, uh, what I mean. Right. Which is wrong about the things that are, that are happening nowadays. True. Uh, it's to me, lyric-wise, like a new ball to the wall. Right, it is. It's mm -hmm. got the same theme and, and, and you know, we've, we've always had themes like that in our yeah. songs. And part of the reason is way back when it was Gabby, our manager, mm -hmm. my wife, who wrote a lot of the lyrics. And to this day, she is helping us to come up with ideas, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of times when we sit there and write songs, we ask Gabby if she had any lyrical content mm -hmm. ideas. And then, you know, once we have a theme for a song, then we give it to Mark and we ask him to write the final words because obviously he's a really good lyricist. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in Wanna Be Free as well. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, two of the five members that recorded this album are not uh, in Accept anymore. And uh, the main reason, as far as I know, and uh, according to the interviews I read, is that uh, you didn't allow 
Herman, for, for example, to write 20 songs on Sinatra? Herman has never written any songs with us. Herman's, I mean, I've re it's, a, it's a known fact that I've played all the guitars since Rest is in Wild. You know, I've always been the one. And Herman is, is just a live guitar player mm -hmm. that we had for the last five years. And we're very happy that he was in the band. Mm -hmm. And we're happy about the time that we did get to spend with the two guys. And now that they've got their own project, we wish them all yeah. the best. And there's no animosity or whatsoever. We just, you know, you have to understand that we all came with a long history. like. Yeah. Herman and Stefan have been in, I don't know, 10 bands yeah. before, seven bands. So we didn't expect to stop all that mm -hmm. just because Accept was getting back together. We were just happy that we found that, that we had the time that we got to spend mm -hmm. with them on the road. And, and now that they've got their own project, you know, we wish yeah. them all the best. Mm -hmm. It's and very simple. But yeah. in their studio, I always played all the mm -hmm. guitars anyhow. Well, it seems that uh, you and Peter are the driving force of yeah. this band. Yeah. And uh, you're doing this for 40 years now. Correct. And um, how could you describe your relationship with Peter. Are you friends outside of the band? Do you hang out together? You just saw it. Yes, I mean, I we, saw it, yes. <laughs> we have dinner and lunch I mean, and uh, breakfast is, every is day. Is your long-time friendship the basis uh, of this relationship? I think it is. You really have to say it. Absolutely. He's like my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and we hang together all the time. We write together. Sometimes we hate each other yeah. like brothers, mm -hmm. but you know, really, I mean, this wouldn't have not have lasted that long if, if there wasn't something very special between yeah. the two of us. Mm -hmm. You know, like we trust each other, and, and like I say, we've I've known Peter longer than any. I don't think I've known any other person that long. If you ever think about it, mm -hmm. it's going on 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Well, we, we were just both like teenagers. Mm -hmm. I was 15 or 16, and he was about the same. Yeah. All the way back in Zoling mm -hmm. in Germany. Crazy. Mm -hmm. and here we are in Athens. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So uh, uh, there was a, uh, a time between uh, 1986 7 when Predator was released, seasons uh, 2010, where you released um, The Blood of the Nations, that you didn't make any new music. As far sure. as I know, you released an album with some classical uh, yeah, cover true. versions. Uh -huh. This one. Uh, but do you sometimes regret that uh, you didn't do any music business wise all those years? I don't think that way. I never really regret anything. Mm -hmm. It was the right decision at the time for me, and uh, we all had enough of the music business. And it was the right decision, I think, mm -hmm. to uh, stop and, and do something else in life until you, you know. I think if you don't have the energy and the hunger and the and the drive, you can't be really doing a good job at this. And then it might be better to, to stop. So for us, it was the perfect decision you know we let it cool off and and when we then regrouped in 2009 we were so hungry again mm -hmm. and that's w why the albums are as good well uh, I want you to tell me now some brief stories about some of these albums yeah sure sure, sure. Uh, breaker the third album of the band and um, breaker Way I would say that when, uh, what, when was this 81 or 82 uh, 81 yeah I would say that uh, this is the album where you found your sound is it yeah, I think we really found it with Rest is in Wild, but th this was really mm -hmm. the first steps in the right direction, I think. There's still some missteps on here, but it's definitely, you can hear, we wanted to um, establish ourselves and, mm -hmm. and find our yeah. style. For example, there's a typical rock and roll such as Burning in here. You sure. don't play any rock and roll in the future. That's you know? right. Yeah. You know, this was probably not, but I think we were still, you know, obviously a strong point, Starlight and Breaker. Yes, sure. You know. <coughs> And down and out was great. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch, we played for a long time. Usually, you can look at the songs and tell which ones we're playing live nowadays. Mm -hmm. That's a good indication of how strong this mm -hmm. album was. You know, you know. Yeah, Russell's and Wild. This is a wow. turned out to be a classic. Nobody knew it at the time, but mm -hmm. I think this album, we said to ourselves, you know what? Screw it. We just do whatever we want because in these previous albums, we listened to a lot of opinions from yeah. other people. We mm -hmm. said, oh, you got to be more commercial, so we tried I'm a Rebel. You got to be more radio friendly, mm -hmm. so we tried something like I want to be no hero and songs where we all thought like, eh, yeah. it's <laughs> not really, it doesn't feel right, you know? Mm -hmm. And on this one, we just said, fuck it. We're just okay. going to play whatever feels right. And, you know, especially like Fast as a Shark and all that these songs. The first first metal song I ever recorded. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. But we just had that attitude of, metal. we just had the attitude of, you know, we're just going to do whatever mm -hmm. feels right. We don't care about the consequences anymore because mm -hmm. nobody can guarantee anything anyhow. So we might as well do what we like. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what about the uh, cover art, which is one of the uh, most strong photos in uh, heavy metal albums? Yeah. I mean, this is iconic. Sure. Uh, was, whose, whose idea was this? That was my idea okay. to, to have these guitars and, and, and we got these. And here are reduced glasses here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But of course, these weren't the real guitars. Those were cheap <laughs> guitars. <Okay. yeah. laughs> but yeah. 
Uh, it, it all started because this, okay. you know, we, we all like mm -hmm. this, this image a lot. Those mm -hmm. were the real guitars. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I still have that guitar. Okay. And it's still got the, the marks. They used some mm -hmm. real barbed wire, mm -hmm. like, like real metal wire. And I still have the marks yeah. on the back of the neck from that photo session. Did you start playing with the flying V because of Michael Schenker? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I always <laughs> liked it because it was a strong, mm -hmm. iconic shaped yes. guitar and it, 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 it looks great live, mm -hmm. you know. And anyhow, this, so this mm -hmm. inspired that, yeah. you, know, you know, so it's like one step mm -hmm. more. Let's, let's take these guitars, do the same photo and just set it on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, metal heart, uh, I mean, it's about an artificial heart or, or about the heart of the metal fan, or both? Oh, both, <laughs> both. It's, we like the double meaning of it, yes. you know. Of, obviously, the, the lyrics talk about the story of yes. a guy one day inventing a heart, an artificial heart, and a few mm -hmm. years later, that was actually reality, as we all know. But back in those days, it was science fiction, mm -hmm. you know. And this is actually before they had Photoshop, so we had to have an actual heart Yes. Built out of uh, out of metal and plastic and had it photographed. You have the original? I do. Oh my God. That, that's a collector's item. And it's now in a museum for on loan for one year somewhere in Switzerland, I believe. Okay. Perfect. But I still have that. Usually this this heart is about that mm -hmm. big. It's it stands in my studio. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, uh, let's go to this one, Blood of the Nations. Well, it's a rebirth, like we were talking right. earlier. It's a rebirth. Man, did you know that you had such a strong material when you released this one? We did didn't, really we didn't really. No, we didn't really. We just, we just said to ourselves, in whenever the, I think it was in January or February, we said, let's just write new songs. And, and then all through the year of, I think it was 2009, by the summer we had about 30, 40 half-finished songs and we met uh, Andy Sneed as mm -hmm. a producer, so he came over. He listened to all the He's material. He's a huge fan of, of the band. Yeah. yeah, he knew exactly how to work with that set because he, he, he picked was a fan. through the song ideas and he mm -hmm. told us, "This is really strong. This is really strong. This is not so strong. So let's leave." You know, so he helped us shape mm -hmm. the direction of this album uh, very much because without him, we would have been sort of un insecure. Where do we go? What does Accept sound like in 2010? Yeah. You know, where do we want to be more commercial? Do we want really aggressive? Do, are we more like a death metal band? Do we tune the guitars down? Where, what do we want to do? And, and we said, let's just write a bunch of songs and see what happens. And he picked through them and that's the result of this. Okay, great. And once, we, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, once, once we, we knew how successful that was and how much fans liked these songs, it was much easier to write yes. the following material because we had a, you know, a, like a marching direction, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yes. So, uh, Wolf, that was more or less just say something to the Greek fans over there. Hey, Greek fans, I love you. We all love you. Hopefully, uh, we'll come back many more times and let's shake some Make some metal together, huh? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. That's before I let you go. I need some All right. uh, awesome. signatures here. <laughs> <laughs>